Okay, welcome to our Hangout today. Today we are going to talk about Avatar Gold and why it is so important to have an avatar, what that means, uh, and we're going to go through a couple of things. Um, so first of all, welcome. Thank you for joining. I think this is my 21st Speed to Profit Marketing Hangout. I do them nearly every week. Once in a while we skip, uh, skip a week, but we do them nearly every week. You know, there's an interesting distinction that I thought about this morning. Some people have hangouts where they talk about things, and I love to do that. We talk about important topics, uh, things that may be trending or things that may be you know, trends that are sociological trends, economic trends, technology trends. My stuff's about marketing <clears throat> and all of the pieces related to that, and particularly about how to create positioning in, in, in a market. And that's where you talk about stuff. And another kind of hangout is one where we teach. And we actually try to convey some important information about the topic as opposed to just talking about it. So we do about both. My hangouts are structured to both talk about things and to teach uh, important things that are going on. So this particular uh, trend that we're talking about today is the increasing importance of having an avatar. So the next uh, slide that I'm going to put up here is really about why we're here. So this hangout, whether you're watching now, I got a bunch of people that have responded, yes, maybe they'll show up, maybe they'll watch it later on YouTube, that's fine. But why you're here, what you're going to get out of this is a good understanding about why it is so important to your business to have a precise and clear avatar. You're also going to go through a process that we're going to go through a little bit later about developing a plan to create one if you don't have one, and if you already do, going through that very same process to refine it, because refining your avatar and making sure that you're marketing and talking to the right person and doing it on a regular basis is a key piece of keeping it sharp, fresh, and your material focused, and of course, closing sales. And then we're going to do a little fun part at the end about getting acquainted with your avatar. Now, those of you that saw the movie Avatar, remember, you know, the avatar was a person that was uh, quasi-imaginary, quasi-real, physical, but powered by the mind of someone else, and it became, uh, crossed the line there where someone actually became the other person and all kinds of interesting stuff, so that's okay. But today, we're going to talk about avatar in the sense of ideal client, but we want to do it in the context of it actually becoming real. Now, th those of you that are on, thank you very much for joining us. I uh, appreciate it. If you want to mute yourself as you come on and tell it, uh, it'd be great because there's some puppies barking and all kinds of cool stuff in the background uh, that might be distracting. And puppies are okay. We have some that might be barking here, but other noises probably are less, uh, you know, less exciting. Anyway, so why you're here is hopefully to get a good understanding of those three things: why it's important to have an av avatar, develop a plan about getting one if you don't have it, or refining it, and then third, we're going to go through a fun exercise about getting acquainted. Uh, with your avatar. Okay, so a <clears throat> couple of announcements, housekeeping items. I get questions all the time. It was funny because I was doing a hangout yesterday. In the middle of a hangout yesterday, I got a phone call from someone wanting to know about how to find out more about speed to profit marketing. So I like to start all the hangouts with at least some information about my programs and how to find out more about them if you want to. Uh, I've got an event, Speed to Profit Marketing Intensive. It's being held June 30th, July 1st and 2nd uh, here at the Desert Retreat. That is just in about a week and a half. Uh, that's mostly full, full already, but there might be a slot if someone's really desperate to come. So if you want to find out more about that, it's speedtoprofitmarketing.com forward slash event. I also have a group coaching program I started a few weeks ago where once a week we get together on a hangout and I teach the Speed to Profit Marketing principles. If that's something that uh, interests you and you're interested in finding out more about how to participate on a small group basis where I regularly teach the principles and you get hot seats and get interaction with the other people in my intensive. Uh, you can find out there at speedprofitmarketing.com uh, forward slash group coaching. And then the next, uh, the other announcement is there's another hangout tomorrow where I'm going to be Ronnie Bincer's special guest uh, that's going to be kind of fun. And that is specifically about one piece of speed to profit marketing. And that's how to create presence, how to create connection, how to reach through the camera into somebody's heart and mind. And if you're serving them in a fair and good way into their wallet, and I don't mean that in a bad way, but make an exchange of value that is fair and representative so they're actually happy to pay you. So we're going to talk about how to create video presence because it's not an accident. Some people are naturally more charismatic than others, but it 
it is a skill that can be learned, and you know that because there are acting schools, and they're full of people who want to do that. So that's an interesting and fun hangout that Ronnie's holding tomorrow, and I'm going to be his special guest. So those are the announcements of upcoming things and how to get a hold of me about those. So uh, as I mentioned, this is the 21st or 22nd Speed to Profit Marketing Hangout. And I'm going to take two minutes here and just run through a really quick review of what we've covered because right now there are 20 something speed to profit marketing hangouts on my YouTube channel. They are good. They are intense in content like today's will be. They will not stay there forever. I'm creating these. Ultimately, they're going to be a product. So if you want them, go get them. They're free. They're yours now. Here's what we've covered so far. The first one was how to find your clients online. <clears throat> After you find them, how do you build rapport with clients? You know, that uh, reflection is making the video go funny. How to build rapport with your clients? Because after you find them, of course, you need to build rapport. They won't do anything with you. Rapport is elusive, and it's, we're going to talk a little bit about that today in connection with your avatar. The third one was how to find, uh, how to solve problems and get paid fast. One of the keys to modern-day marketing is speed. That's why it's speed to profit. Profit for your customers, so solving their problems quickly, and then, of course, profit for your pocket. The fourth one was how to create long-term relationships fast and that might seem like an oxymoron but it's not because long-term relationships are created by going through certain steps. It used to take us a long time when we were geographically distant from each other. Phone calls were infrequent, letters even more so and it took a while to go through the steps. The digital world and the speed of the internet has allowed us to move through the steps of creating a relationship much faster if we choose to do so. There are ways to do that on purpose and you can create rapport and relationships quicker and doing it doing so intentionally is a key to business. Then I did two hangouts on how to do hangouts. Uh, they were number one and two. I call those HOA magic if I move that too quickly. Uh, they're on my YouTube channel as well. They taught some of the technical things, went through the apps and so forth. And then I did two hangouts on YouTube. How do you integrate hangouts with YouTube? How do you use YouTube? What about YouTube Live? I went through the different pieces of YouTube playlists and how to use YouTube effectively as a marketing tool. Then I went three hangouts over something very proprietary and powerful called the money triangle. Now this is really cool. The money triangle is something at the event we spend a day and a half doing because the money triangle teaches a proprietary framework that if you connect to three corners people pour money on you. It's really cool and it's a lot of fun. We spent three hangouts on it uh, as a massive condensation of something we did a day and a half for at the event and we'll talk about it. That was the event in March. We'll do some more about it at the event later this month. Then I did two hangouts on high ticket uh, sales. High ticket sales. So I got a lot of questions from coaching prospects and others that have other coaching programs about what high ticket sales are. I have VIP days. Uh, they're very expensive and I make no bones about that. So do many other um, gurus. Uh, and so I got questions about, well, what in the world do you do that makes it worth ten dollars or $15,000 to spend a day with you? And the answer is it's, uh, it's important. The answer is really important. And so it was so important that I created a hangout, two hangouts actually. One is on what having a high ticket item in your repertoire does for you, how it changes the way you think about your content and your service, and how it benefits both you and your clients. Just the fact that you have them, whether you sell them to any particular client or not. And then the second one was about how to sell them, how to market and sell high ticket. Um, then I did two hangouts on what I call business explosion. Business explosion, yay. Uh, that was about speed and service and quality and what the expectations are in this day and age and the keys to moving through a business explosion. I also did the second one on a fatal mistake that I see made very often in marketing where there's a mismatch in expectations and how that destroys businesses quickly. And then there were three that we did on authenticity. Authenticity is a word, again, that is talked about a lot. And so what I did is I spent three hangouts teaching about why it's important, what it means, and what it might mean for you, and then the third one was how you can create authenticity in your business, which is that feeling of rapport and authentic uh, connection with your clients. And we're almost done. Then I did one a few weeks ago on uh, social media. Those are some examples why that's essential and how to create a comprehensive social media platform. And then we did one on uh, 
what's a unique value proposition, why it's so critical to have a unique value proposition, and how to create one, which is really cool. Today, we're talking about Avatar Gold, and we're going to talk about the three things that I mentioned. Uh, that's the review of everything we've done so far, and Avatar Gold simply is this. Whether you're writing, uh, whether you write copy, whether you make videos, whether you make podcasts, and so, or whatever you do, knowing exactly who your customer is, is, is not just nice, it's not even important, it's critical. Because if you don't know who they are specifically and very, in a very targeted way, you're very likely going to go out of business because there are going to be those that do. Now let me give you some examples. We know that avatar advertising is not new. Uh, there's a, always, you know, every time there's a new ad that comes out, I can think of some specific liquor ads that came out a while ago, and there was an uproar about them because they seemed to be targeting the young. Now, how would somebody know that an ad was, quote, targeting the young just by looking at the ad? Well, the ad, the answer is obvious. The images that were portrayed, the language that was used, the activity that was going on in the commercial, the stance, the posture, the expressions, the feeling were aimed at what? A particular group of people resonating with their thinking, their feelings, their emotions, and their experience. Now, in the hangout that we did on creating rapport, which I talked about a little while ago, it was many, many weeks ago, back in February or March, we talked about that rapport comes when we share one of three things. We share some kind of common experience, we share some kind of common goal or objective, or we might share a common worldview, how we look at things. Those aren't the only things that create rapport, but they're certainly three powerful ways to do that. And in advertising, uh, especially like television advertising, video, and, and to some extent billboard, billboard and print, Creating that feeling of rapport through your language and through the images and so forth is how you do that. So someone being upset and the movement being started about targeting you know, the young with, with alcohol ads, and without engaging in the debate, it was clear that that was the avatar from all of those things, or at least clear to the people that objected to those ads. So that keep that kind of in mind because the appeal to certain groups of people through those images and language and video and actions and talking and the way things are treated and the opinions and attitudes of the people in the commercial are key pieces of you going through an exercise to define your avatar. So think about it that way and think about powerful advertising uh, Super Bowl commercials and other high dollar ones or maybe even low, low dollar ones, some of them are even better. But the, the power that they have to attract and resonate with a certain group. That's what finding an avatar is about. And if you or I as a business are not going through that same kind of effort and energy to connect with and create rapport and power in the mind of someone who might see this, then we're going to lose business to those that are for very obvious reasons. So that's like parents that know how to talk to their teenagers have more rapport and ability to engage them than parents that don't. That is avatar hunting. Same thing. Examples are all over the place, not just marketing and advertising. Raising kids, getting along in clubs, fitting in at church or in the community. All of those things play a really significant role in creating that rapport and in marketing and thinking about and creating the language and images and video for your avatar. All right. So <clears throat> let's move on. That's the first piece we're going to talk about is why, or these, these are the three things, sorry, we're going to talk about why it's important, we did that just a little bit, but some more, we're going to then develop a plan about uh, how, to, how to find your own avatar or refine yours, and then we're going to do some activity about getting acquainted. All right, so the first thing uh, <clears throat> I want to talk about is why, why is it important to have an avatar? Now, everybody is going to have ideas about this, and we're going to get to questions in a minute, and toward the end, we'll bring in people that I want to add, and I'm going to ask a question. So be thinking about this, your own avatar stories and things that you have done uh, to create avatars. Be very interested in the way you approach creating an avatar and so forth, but that'll be in the, the activity section at the end when we say, hey, so I'm going to talk you through some stuff, and then I'm going to want to have you share ideas that you have about creating an avatar. <clears throat> so you need... Three, 
three reasons I'm going to mention about why it's really important to have a precise avatar. The first one is targeting. Targeting, targeting, targeting. Okay? When I hold these up there, the lights go dim. All right. So targeting and then marketing and closing. So let's talk about those one at a time. Targeting <clears throat> means aiming. So if you think about aiming a, a, a bow and arrow or aiming a rifle or something like that, <clears throat> it, you, 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 do, you do some aiming, targeting at a very specific target. So if you're going to shoot a, you know, do archery and shoot a bow and arrow, you aim very carefully at the bullseye, assuming that that's what you want to hit. It, that's important for us in two or three ways. One, if you do any... Now, there's lots and lots of free ways to market. Okay, there's lots of free ways. Social media is free. YouTube video hosting is free. Hangouts are free. Like we're doing all of this kind of uh, work that we're doing here is free. And you should take full and powerful advantage of that. But the things that I'm going to talk to you about targeting are applicable to both free and paid marketing, which is what we're going to talk about next. Targeting in the paid advertising sense, so if you're paying for column inches or you're paying for Google Ads or you're paying for Facebook advertising, uh, targeting controls your cost. If you put out a Facebook ad that has a very attractive, uh, a very um, resonating picture or headline, you might get lots and lots of people to click on it, which of course costs you lots of money, that may or may not be targeted traffic. So you could end up spending an enormous amount of money that you don't want to spend, don't need to spend, because why? Because you're showing ads to non-targeted people. Uh, YouTube, in its ability to get ranked on Google for certain keywords is another form of targeting that's free. You can rank your articles, you can rank your G plus page, you can get your Facebook edge rank uh, numbers up through targeting and that includes you know, hashtag strategies, that includes keyword strategies, uh, that includes what groups you belong to and how much you participate in different, different groups, how much you initiate threads, all of those things contribute to your overall uh, uh, clout score or Google rank or edge rank on Facebook, all of those things help with your targeting so that you're actually aiming at the right group. But if you don't have a precise avatar, and this gets back to why it's important, you have no idea how to target it. So let me give you an example. For my avatar in Speed to Profit Marketing, my avatar in Speed to Profit Marketing is businesses that want to double or triple or ten times their income, and they are either confused about how to do that online, they feel invisible, like they can't get heard, or they're overwhelmed. There's just too flipping much to do and they don't know which things to do first. So businesses that are confused, feel invisible or overwhelmed, that are just aching to grow and they can't seem to do it, that's the avatar. Or that's actually one piece of the avatar. Another piece for me, and I get very specific about this, is they have to be actually in pain. <clears throat> Meaning, they're struggling. Wow, I know that there's people out there that need this product or service for whatever reason they know that and I gotta do something different because I don't have the sales I want I'm not attracting the kind of clients they want you know I'm not attracting the ones I want I'm not getting them and in addition to that they have to be searching for an answer and they have to be willing to take action so I have many criteria a business that wants to expand that is feeling either confused invisible or overwhelmed they're actually in pain meaning aware of the fact that they they're not getting what they want they're searching for an answer and they're willing to do something about it so that are the those are the characteristics that I use to describe my business owner uh, in addition to that I also use some I won't go over all of it because it'll take too long but I use some age demographics because my experience in coaching resonates with certain people so I target certain age ranges and I also of course target language because I speak some other languages but not fluently enough to to do what I consider to be a world-class job uh, I speak a couple fluently, but I wouldn't consider it world-class instruction uh, in those other languages, and I do consider it that in English. So I target, you know, languages, and I target those kinds of things that I have, and that that I've said, and that helps me be very specific about who I'm talking to. 
Okay. The second piece is that I said is it helps you target your marketing. So after I figured out Okay, we've got some questions. Let's just do these as we go. Thank you, because this is exactly right. Ammon, uh, I've got a staff ringing me these. So, Ammon, you have a question. Um, a businessman wearing a sharp suit is one form of avatar, or one who dresses deliberately and notably casually, uh, casually are avatars to the non-traditional. So that is absolutely a piece of the equation. So I've been in both worlds. I've been an executive in the U.S. and Canada, testified before Congress. There was a time when, you know, three-piece Armani's were the, the, the order of the day, you know, 250 or $300 ties, and you just showed up that way in battle dress because that's what you were doing, and that gave you a certain uh, credibility. It was a ticket to play. It just what you did in that arena. Okay, and, and so if I'm aiming at that avatar by itself, let's think about what that means. Sometimes I would wear an expensive suit like that <clears throat> because I wanted to impress someone. I wanted to get the ticket to play. I wanted to get some automatic respect. That might not be who I am internally. Let me give you the contrasting piece. When I was recruited to go to Canada to fix their energy market in the province of Alberta, and that's when I had the contract with the Queen that you know about, that funny story. Um, Ammon, I know you heard that, and I don't know if the others have, but I deliberately, I wore a suit to one interview, but I deliberately wore casual clothes to the office. I deliberately took a Steve Jobs stance because Canada uh, is more, particularly in government, is more buttoned down, and I wanted to come in as the hired gun from outside that was the, the dragon slayer they brought in to tame unruly market participants that had gouged the market and created havoc during the blackouts in 2001 in California and the mess up there as well when Enron guys went to jail and all that stuff. So I deliberately came in as the gunslinger uh, dressed in a different way to create a different impression, even though suits were the order of the day, and that's where the, the you know the dude thing. When I interviewed with the minister of energy, I called him dude, and I because I use that word as a matter of course in speaking. I do I can do it with a, a complete you know authenticity without stretching it at all. I just allowed that persona to be part of the thing. So your question is a very good one. And it goes to the, the impression you're trying to create. Uh, a button-down businessman might be part of my avatar image. So for me, in Speed to Profit Marketing, if it meets the other criteria, if he's a businessman aching to grow, if he feels either confused, invisible, or overwhelmed, and he's hurting, he's willing, and he's searching, then uh, if he's wearing a button-down suit, cool. I can talk to him in a different language because it might fit to talk to him in accounting style language with, you know, uh, day's inventory turnover and return on EBITs, EBITIDs and all those acronyms from the accounting world. Or if he's a different kind of entrepreneur, like I am now, uh, then I would use different language. And so that might, that could well be part of it. Uh, as a complete avatar, if someone's looking for image consulting, then that might be exactly the avatar. Dude that wears or a gal that wears expensive clothes that is trying to create a powerful impression. My job as an image consultant is to help them create that powerful impression. So someone that wants to wear heavy duty clothes, create a power impression of power and um, uh, self-assurance, that might be enough for the avatar. So it depends on what your business is, what you're trying to help them do as to how each of the pieces of the avatar uh, play into that. Does that make sense? Okay. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay, do you want to add some more to that, Emin? Uh, well, I, I was saying, it, it's, it's what I'm picking up there is it's, it's know your target, know their story, and then know your role in their story. And then you're playing the role. Dress for it, embody it, become that part of their story. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, and you've, you've used a couple of really powerful words, which is about knowing their story. And that's interesting because when we get toward the end, I'm going to talk about that. We're not going to do a hangout today on story, but I am going to do one, actually three, a series of three hangouts on how to create, to, to discover, develop, and deliver personal story, which is one of the pieces of the proprietary framework in my 
marketing work that I do. <clears throat> so good question, thank you. The second area we started to talk about before I did the question is your marketing. If I don't, if I know who my avatar is, uh, like Emma just talked about, then I can write language for them. I can talk to them. I can be in their head. I can enter the conversation in their minds like we talk about, right? If I don't really know them very well or I know them casually or if I'm in the, under the mistaken impression that, oh, my, my product's for everybody or that kind of thing, let me, uh, then I'm going to be very generic in my language. So let me give you some examples. One of the, work, one of the pieces of work that I do that's not... Uh, speed to profit marketing is I have a whole practice of breakthrough coaching. People that are struggling in their lives, looking for breakthrough work to get to another level, personal achievement. My my corporate background includes a large stint of creating high performance, extraordinary teams that did impossible things in in you know impossible timelines. I have a, a track record for doing that, so I created a breakthrough program for that. <clears throat> the language now I might say. You know, everybody needs to level up. Everybody needs to have breakthroughs in their life. So my targeting is could be everybody. Everybody needs that, right? And if I start writing language or putting marketing out on that basis, one, I'm going to waste a lot of money. And two, I'm going to speak in a watered-down tone because I'm trying to appeal to too many. On the other hand, if I narrow that avatar down and I say, I'm only looking for someone who's in real pain, who is ready to rip it up and take their life and their performance, I don't care if it's money, business, relationship, or whatever, to another level, but they need that structure and accountability, and they are willing to move now, then I can language marketing that is completely different, and when that person hears it, it's like, yeah, I got to have some of that, and that's the feeling that you want to create, but I can only do that if, like you said, I know exactly who I'm talking to, and exactly what pain they're going through right now, so that I can be that answer. So creating marketing, whether it's the written word or my favorite, which of course is video because I have good video presence and I love it, but it's, it all is good. Written is powerful and, and video is powerful and spoken podcasts are great too and they all serve their different, different medium <clears throat> and different audiences. But create, so the second piece is really creating the marketing, right? And knowing your avatar helps you create marketing that is directed, it is on point, and it speaks to the real need and, you know, the fears, frustrations, needs, desires, fantasies are the things that people list, fears, frustrations, needs, desires, and fantasies. If I know exactly who they are, then I can talk to them. Now, let's talk for a minute about what that means to know exactly who they are, okay? I just saw a piece from a couple of well-known marketers, Andy and Mike, that are putting traffic Genesis is going to launch here pretty quick, and they spent an entire gigantic email, maybe you saw it, or maybe it was a, I can't remember what it was, talking about this very topic, and I just thought it was funny because I was getting ready to do this hangout, I just saw it a couple days ago, and they talked about in their experience that I need to know their family size, their demographic, their age, their income, what they like, what they eat, where they go, etc., and they, the list was long, and I laughed because it's true. It's difficult to know that much about a given group of people, but here's the secret. This is the worth, the, the, the money one. If you can pick one person in your target group that you know that well, even if they're an imaginary person, age, weight, money, relationship status, family, food, preferences, sports teams, restaurants, movies, and on and on and on. If you can get one person and write your marketing at them, it will reach more people. Speak to one, talk to many is the sort of phrase that people use. And the reason is very simple. If someone, you've been in a crowd where someone is talking to the crowd, what do you do? Uh, you start texting and you start looking at your email and whatever, because why? They're not talking to you. If, on the other hand, you're in that same crowd, listen to that same gal talk, I'm going to sneeze, excuse me, maybe. Oh, it's a long, drawn-out prelude, right? Oh, well. It went away. If you're in that same crowd listening to that same person, and a message pop up, excuse me, distractions. 
and they are talking to you and what they're talking about is going on inside of you right now and it resonates and it's like oh this is exactly what I need to hear this is for me you're not texting you're not checking your email you're riveted to the message because they're speaking your language they've entered the conversation in your mind and all the ways that we describe that that opportunity only exists when you've done the work to figure it out so that's the second reason is to get your marketing tuned up the third piece is what I call the closing conversation after you find a customer and after you market to them you have to close them to get the cash right if you cannot talk to them in their language you're gonna have a hard time closing them the mistake a lot of people make that I see over and over again and I'm sure you have too is when they're doing the closing they want to talk about how cool the product is and they want to talk about how many cool things it will do for you as a potential client that's not what I want to hear what I want to hear is it will solve a particular problem that I have right now real fast real elegantly and if a guy talks to me about a product or service and says, you know what, it will do this for you right now. So let me give you an example. When I buy a car, I like to worry about the sound system. I own a recording studio and I have for 35 years. I always tell car salesmen that. I always tell them I care about the, the uh, stereo, right? And very rarely do they remember and very rarely do they actually go there to see if I like that. The ones that do, I'm interested in. Why? Because they remembered what I said and they cared enough about it to address the issue for me, which is I like my car to sound good because I've owned a recording studio and I like cool speakers and stuff. Okay, whatever. So if you know your avatar and you're ready to close and you can address their specific needs, I don't care if your product does 50 other things, the one that they came or one or two or ten that they came to solve with you you know that, then you can talk in terms of that thing. Imagine how it will feel having this solved elegantly right now, completely, so you never have to worry about it again. That's music. And if you only describe two things that your product does, but they're the two that they want real bad right now, you're done. And the other eight things are bonus, and you probably shouldn't even talk about them. It should be like, okay, sign here, check, good, it's yours. Oh, by the way, there's eight more things that it does in case you need them. Okay, cool. Now, <clears throat> we're going to move to part two. Uh, if there's any other questions, uh, that are, that those that are here, unmute and ask them. Let's do the questions as we go instead of at the end. Questions? Gone. Okay, cool. The next piece we're going to talk about is I screwed up and I just did the why and I didn't have this slide up so pretend the slide was up all that conversation really cool now we are to the next one which is develop a plan so I'm gonna approach this in a completely different way I could tell you to develop a plan is make a list of all of the characteristics that you think are your avatar and you know look at that list and see if it resonates and so forth that's all good advice but that would be boring and that's not how I do things I want you to think about a plan for creating an avatar in a different way okay and this is how I want you to think about it. I belong to a professional choir <clears throat> we record regularly and it is a very large choir full symphony orchestra full-blown classical like 250 a piece person adult choir 250 300 kids when we perform in a great big venue there's like a thousand people performing it's awesome uh, the albums we release have charted number one on billboard another one we did number two we're getting ready to release another one first of July I say that because then you know when I say it's awesome it is world-class awesome fantastic now you don't get in that choir either in the orchestra or in any of the choirs without what an audition right so I'm going to use this word I want you to think about auditioning avatars okay I want you to think about auditioning avatars now here's how that would work you need to make the list that I just talked about I talked about it and kind of brushed it off but you need to make the list you, with whatever your product or service is 
who that it probably serves very best. Now, quite often, especially with coaches and consultants and people writing books and you know that kind of thing that are going to go on speaking tours and so forth, they find, especially with coaches, that their avatar is themselves. They've often learned some important breakthrough skill with parenting or with their own breakthrough work or their own you know struggles they had to overcome with you know problems in the past or addictions or childhood abuse or struggles or whatever and they've developed an incredible massive system and they can help and therefore they're in a position oh my click I have to click my screen I what my lower third went behind the film strip all right well I, it, it's okay I'm just gonna go on I don't know how to fix it any better than that okay so Think of it in terms of an audition. Okay, you're going to audition avatars. So to do that, like to audition for this choir, <clears throat> there were some pretty basic requirements. You have to read music. You have to be able to sing. You have to have sung before. You have to have sung. You know, just be singing pretty good. And the directors were awesome, awesome talent and awesome instructors, willing to train people that already had you know some level of pretty good talent and so forth done a great job been in there now several years wonderful experience wouldn't trade it for anything a lot of commitment a lot of time a lot of work but I've been a professional musician all my life and a performing one and like I said I owned a recording studio got a lot of stuff done so this is natural for me but the, the key piece is the audition so after you make the list of who your likely avatar is and just guess this doesn't have to be a long, complicated thing. Well, probably the best person suited for my product is 35 to 50. It's a woman, or maybe it's gender neutral, doesn't matter, woman or a man. Uh, they have a business. They don't have a business. Let's say you're giving parenting advice. They have a teenager between uh, 13 and 15, you know, early teens. Uh, they're just coming into this wildly independent phase. They are blowing by curfew and very, you know, authority resistant. And this parent is like at the end of the rope. There's been a few times in trouble at school, a couple of problems, and they're looking for some help, and da 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 da, da right? And so you can make a list of things like that. Or if it's a business like I did with mine, you know, it's a business that's just really aching to grow. They're not satisfied with where they are. They want a bigger market share. Maybe they've seen their sales plateau and their advertising old methods don't work anymore and they got to get with the new stuff. They don't know exactly what to do. They feel like they're invisible online, like all the stuff I gave you, right? Then what I do is I audition an avatar. So I create a persona and I say, okay, this is the business person. And I audition them. And here's how I do it. Okay, and this is fun, and this is what I would suggest that you do. I create that person in my mind. I give them a name, rank and serial number, not really, but I give them a name and I start talking to them and I carry on conversations with them. Like and I do it as if they are that person, that age, that those interests, and so forth. And I see how it feels matching with that avatar that I've created. And so I audition avatars. And I, it's funny because after a while you either get comfortable with them, you get comfortable talking to them about their business, about their interests, about what they're trying to do, or it becomes like a place where you've had a conversation with somebody and it gets stagnant. And you know, it's like, uh, yeah, is it time to like tell you, like, pretend I have to go, pick up my phone and invent a phone call, whatever, something's awkward about this, I need to end it. So you audition avatars. And it's funny because when I do that, I get to be comfortable with an avatar as I make some adjustments and create a feeling that, hey, this is who I'm selling to. This is who I'm talking to. So I audition avatars. So here's the plan that I would suggest. I'm looking for my sheet here. Here's the plan that I would suggest about doing this audition process to develop an avatar. So pick a week, a few days, and say, I'm either going to develop an avatar or I'm going to refine my avatar or check the one that I've got. But I'm going to do it in this new interesting way. So I'm going to take... Um, a couple of days, one or two days, doing what I just said, trying out this avatar. I, I decided who they are, give them a name, get really specific about that, right? And I'm going to spend a day or two talking to them, acting with them, uh, having marketing conversations with them, talking about their business with them, and that's appropriate for me, uh, whatever your avatar is, or parent, you know, whatever it is. But I have these conversations and see how that fits. And so I work with that for a day or two. 
And then the second thing I do is I then take another couple days, and I'll then I go on and I say, okay, now that I've got this avatar nailed down, and I'm pretty comfortable with Jerry. So Jerry's my avatar. I know he's 52. He's got a business, a pool cleaning supply business. The old way of advertising yellow pages and billboards and stuff's not working anymore. The thing on the side of his truck isn't happening. He knows he's got to get online better. He's got a website, but it sucks, and so forth. So I've got a guy. Then I start trying to think, all right, where would I find Jerry, this avatar? Where would he be? And I'm talking mostly online, but you can apply the same thing offline. Where would this guy or this gal be hanging out? And I'm using Jerry, so where would he hang out? What does he do? Well, if he's got a family, maybe he is in service organizations. Maybe he goes to church. Maybe you'd find him at church. Maybe online he would be part of different Excuse me, maybe he belongs to some different clubs. Maybe he's got some hobbies. And I start trying to think about uh, where I would find this person online. Now, for example, in the executive world that I used to travel in uh, a lot, then I knew that those kind of people belonged. There was a lot of golf involved. That's one guy was very tennis, so they were talking country club kind of stuff. We're talking specific golf clubs, membership sites. There was a there was a club in downtown Calgary where I was. It was uh, members only. The oh, the Petroleum Club. That's it because Alberta's got so much oil, right? Oh, you, know, you had to be a member. You had to be invited. Couldn't go. For a long time, it was men only. In fact, when I was there, it was still men only. Uh, and they were just pushing that boundary. And I don't know if it's changed or not. That was I left there in 2007. I think it was the last time I had dinner there. So then I start thinking about, you know, where would these people be? And so I spend two days creating a map of where I'm likely to find these people and what they're likely to be doing. And then I spend a couple of days testing that and going to those places online, looking in those forums, if it's a physical place, looking to see where they are and see if it seems to fit. Am I going there and engaging in people? Uh, so let's, for example, LinkedIn groups. I belong to, I speak, I also do some public speaking, so I go to belong to several speaking groups. I go in those groups and I see who's commenting and who's there and who the threads are started and how much participation there is and what kind of people are in there, and how many speeches they're giving and to who. And that's how I test, all right, am I in the right group? In other words, I have an avatar in my mind. It's a person that gives keynote speeches to, you know, at least 500 people. They charge at least $5,000 a speech. Is the language and participation of the people in this group equal to that avatar? That's an example of testing. So I spend some time creating the avatar. I spend some time creating a map of where they might be. And then I spend a couple days testing that online mostly to see if I'm finding that avatar there. And that's the process I go through to create a successful avatar that I then can start marketing to, writing copy and, and you know, getting a powerful resonance with, creating the language and so forth. It doesn't hit all the time, but it is a wonderful process to think through and it is very successful way more often than not. When I say it doesn't hit all the time, it's to say it's not perfect, but it is by far the best method that I have found to create that ideal map of who you're trying to talk to. So that's part two. Part three is a little fun thing to get acquainted with your avatar. So, <clears> through auditions. <clears throat> so, I want, right now, here's what I'd like to do with the people that are on here. So, here's the little game that we're going to play. First of all, <clears throat> I'm hoping, so this game could work or it could fall flat, splat, right? But I'm hoping that during this time, as you have, and I'm giving you some more time to think about it. Oh, dear, he's going to ask me to do something. Yes. During this time, I hope that you've been thinking about your own avatar. Who is your ideal customer? Who are they? Where are they? How old are they? What do they need? What are they in pain for? And so forth. And now what I'd like you to do is I'm going to ask you to create just a two or three or four sentence conversation starter, and I'll go first, so I'll give you an example, okay? That you would say that's completely different maybe than what you say now because you've thought about this whole avatar creation game differently, okay? Now for speed to profit marketing, which is what I'm talking about here, I could do it for breakthrough work. In fact, maybe I will because it's, no, let's just do it for the one we're doing. 
Speed to profit marketing. Okay, so the way I talk to someone that I think is my avatar, and this is how I open conversations, instead of talking about marketing or talking about anything else that would be sort of a normal business conversation opener, <clears throat> I ask questions. I would ask a question like this. <clears throat> so who is the favorite kind of person that you like to meet and talk to? And I would ask a person that after maybe name introductions at a strange place. Who's the f what, what's your favorite kind of person to meet and talk to? I get some strange look. No, I mean, really, if you could, any kind of a person, and not a name, but what kind of person do you really like to talk to? And that's a different kind of a question. And then they answer, and I say, well, why is that? What is there about that that, lets, that makes that just so exciting for you to talk to that, talk to, meet uh, that kind of person? And pursuing that, and what I found in doing that kind of thing, and that's just one, is that in creating that kind of question, invariably, especially for people that are in business and that like what they do, and if they're in a business they hate, it doesn't work so well, but if they're in a business doing stuff they like, invariably they start talking about people that they want to be doing business with, that they might enjoy being around. That is an easy way then to lead to finding out who their avatar is, and then from there I get easily to, well, do you have as many of those kinds of people that you've just described for me in your business, buying your product and service as you want? Do you have as many of those for clients as you'd like? And it's never a stretch. That always fits because they're talking about people they'd like to work with, right? And so whether it's an, a financial advisor or whether it's an attorney or whether it's an accountant or whether it's a pool shop owner or whether it's a coach consultant or anything else, that kind of an approach works. So the game is, I've given you one, I've played the first move, so I want everybody to take a turn if you're willing and say what kind of interesting approach would you have to creating that initial rapport with the person. All right, who wants to go first? Somebody unmute and give me a shot. You need to turn your mic on. Hello? There you are, please. So I guess I struggle with this a little bit because I'm not, because with three sort of main areas, you know, antiques, you know, skincare, spokesperson, and then, you know, marketing, but um, not even so much marketing, but doing the internet work, I'm not, I don't, I guess I struggle with who do I introduce myself as. I mean, it's easy if I'm at an auction because, you know, if I'm at an auction sale buying antiques, then it's, you know, so are you a collector? Do you collect things? Are you here? You know, I just kind of, I, I guess I just tend to get, get to it, right? But it, because I go to so many auction sales, I know people already, so they know that I sell on, you know, that I have an eBay store and all that kind of stuff. Um, the skincare stuff is also a little interesting because, you know, I get always asked about it all the time. So... I guess I, I struggle a little bit with where to begin, and it's likely situational. So if I'm at an event at a, well, mind you, on the other hand, if I'm at an event like at a marketing event, we may very well be talking about skincare, and it may be, you know, one part of, um, you know, one aspect of it instead of getting directly into the marketing piece. So, but I have to admit that overall, through in the conversation, I, I touch on all three, and usually one of those does resonate. You know, somebody always collects something, somebody always mentions something about skin, and somebody always mentions something about, you know, why they're at this event. So I don't have a 30, you know, second elevator speech per se, but I'm working on it. And um, I'm not, so I'd like a little bit of help as how to, you know, formulate something, you know, more of my message, I guess. Okay, so um, I turn. You can turn your mic off now. I, I so here's what I would here's what I would say about that. It gets especially in practicing getting your avatar organized. Just pick one. It's not going to ruin an evening or a networking opportunity if you went to one and say tonight, I am the online antiques person. That's who I am. That's who I am all night. That's all I'm going to do, and I'm going to refine and hone my skills at connecting with and 
finding out everything I can in that way. So I, when I go to events, I have more than one approach. Uh, and I have more than one program. Seed to Profit Marketing is one, and Breakthrough is one, and Breakthrough Leadership Results for corporate stuff. I just pick one. I'm one person tonight. And I don't deviate, and I even test different approaches that way to see what works. I find that when I get scattered and I do a bunch of them, I get lost, and I become ineffective. So what I would do, and the advice that I would give on that piece, is just to pick one. Be one, one person, one night, and don't violate it. And if there's some kind of a raging emergency and somebody walks in dripping with money and it appears to be your other one, yeah, okay, whatever. But uh, I pick one and I try to get really good with it. So that's the way I'd answer that question. All right, who wants to be next? Okay, I'll, I'll go. Um, my avatar is a little different. I don't tend to approach. I lurk. I uh, play the mysterious person. And I've keep an eye on the conversations, and I throw in helpful answers. But I want my, my prospective client to understand that he's going to need to come to me. I'm playing hard to get. But what I'm doing is I am being there as the quiet helper, the smart guy who isn't saying much, that they then want to engage with, and they come to me. Because I find that is then my home ground, and I know exactly where I'm dealing with it. So that's an interesting, um, Brian Horn, who's one of the authority guys, he has different authority models, and he doesn't have one called the Lurker, but he does have one, that's a StarCraft monster, by the way, in the Zerg, but he, he doesn't have one called the Lurker, but he has one called the Wizard, which is someone who has some specialized knowledge, and that might be what you're describing. So tell me, if you be if you be the lurker and you monitor conversation, putting in helpful tidbits until someone is so impressed with you that they say, you know, Ammon, that stuff you're saying sounds really cool. Tell me more. Then what do you do? Well, then I usually, uh, hopefully, I've picked up some clues by then as to who they are anyway, just from listening in. You, you pick up a lot. The first point of sales is always to listen. Um, if not, I'm going to ask some questions at that point. I'm going to introduce myself very briefly. My name is Amon Johns. I'm a, a marketing consultant who specializes in online, and particularly the web. I don't do so much with email. Um, you know, what do you do? And that, that's when I can turn it around and find that angle to engage them on something they're going to be interested about. So that's very good. Good advice, good answer, and uh, the, the listening way, 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 way more than talking. And if you don't already have a hook from their uh, initial conversation and the stuff they've been uh, giving you before they ask you that question, and you haven't been able to hide deep enough to lurk long enough to get heavy-duty stuff for them, then you ask some more questions and go fish it out. So that's a good, uh, a good answer, a good, good question, and a good answer. Thank you. Does somebody else want to talk about their avatar fishing approach? All right, I don't see any other volunteers, so let's just review really quickly. Today we talked about uh, today we talked about uh, three things in finding our avatar. Hello. Hi, it's me oh, again. Oh, okay, go ahead. Um, I think that's a good point that Ammon made too, though, that because I you know, well, admittedly, I tend to talk a lot. So, you know, part of it is to um, l ask questions and then just wait for the answer. Even if there's silence, just, you know, shut up and just let them speak because people do like to talk about themselves and, you know, asking questions and digging deep because you can always find something interesting to talk about and find that common thread. So asking a lot of questions and just, you know, um, listening for that nugget too, like Ammon said, you know, that's really good. You know, so um, I think I, you know, in situations need to ask more questions. So, you know, sometimes I get a little intimidated too, especially if I don't quite know, you know, what I, you know, what angle I was going to go for or something or, or the or the event. But um, overall, I think that's a good approach just to, you know, you've said that many times too, though, just, you know, listen. Even if there's uncomfortable silences, just, you know, keep asking questions. So... I'm going to try that. Okay, good. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, so our review so far is uh, we talked about Avatar, three things, why it's important. Uh, we talked about developing, wh why it's critical. We talked about being, I'll get my little cards up. Uh, we talked about three things. There we go. 
It's important for your targeting, for your marketing, and for your closing purposes to know your avatar and to get it heavy, heavy in their language. We then talked about an approach, creating an avatar using what I call the audition approach, where you uh, pick them, you audition different people and situations and places until you find that you found the right one. That's, I think, why I like the audition, is because you keep auditioning stuff until you found the the person that's really resonating and does exa doing exactly what you want. Uh, and then, of course, engaging in those conversations that we talked about. And I, I treat it, like I said, I treat it a little bit like a game. So that is the review of today. A couple of other points here as we come to a close. And that is a reminder, if you want to find out more, we have a July 30th, excuse me, June 30th, July 1st, and 2nd event. Uh, Speed to Profit Marketing Intensive here at the Desert Retreat in Phoenix. Uh, we will be covering the proprietary money triangle framework, another proprietary framework that also happens to be a triangle called the marketing triangle and how to implement those and then the peak market penetration framework, a number of proprietary frameworks that I found to be very successful in creating awesome marketing. So that's there. There's the group coaching thing that started a few weeks ago if that's something that interests you. There's a couple of URLs, speedtoprofitmarketing.com forward slash event or forward slash group coaching, if any of those things uh, resonate with you and you're saying to yourself, it's time to do this, please don't procrastinate. Uh, if you're feeling that feeling, then jump on it. Um, our next hangout is tomorrow. This is not mine. This is Ronnie Bincer's. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, he's a great host, and he's, uh, he does really well. He interviews lots of cool people. I get to be on his Hangout as his featured guest tomorrow. This is specifically about how to create on-camera presence, how to engage people through the lens, how to think about what, what to do in your head so that you can uh, be completely not only comfortable in front of the lens, but so that you can actually create that emotional resonance because there's a way to do that. It's not an accident. It's a skill. You can learn it, you can develop it, but the first place is to understand that it's doable. So that's tomorrow's Hangout. Check on Ronnie Bincer, B-I-N-C-E-R, the Hangout Helper, his uh, site if you don't already have an invitation. And then our next Hangout here is going to be June 25th. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold a series of three. And I've done that before. I did it with Authenticity and I did it with the Money Triangle. I'm going to hold a series of three hangouts about story, about how to discover, develop, and deliver personal story, how to take the events that have shaped your life and create customer hooks and magnets in a way that uh, will bring clients to you, like Ammon was talking about, so that they become attracted to you and you become the answer instead of just another option. That's our next Hangouts. And last of all, if you want to contact me, there's a couple of ways to do that. You can get a hold of me on Facebook. Send me a private message on Facebook. If you're not already friended with me, please do that. I haven't hit my 5,000 limit yet, so uh, I have room. Love to friend you if you're not already there. And then there's a couple of other emails and so forth down there uh, to get a hold of me. Thank you for coming to the Hangout today. I'll open it up. Does anybody have anything that you want to say? Unmute yourself and say. Okay, I'm back. Um, can you just spell out that? Because your um, film strip is behind the, the... The film strip is in front of the overlay. Okay. What would you like me to spell? The, uh, just spell out where, like, the private message and your email. Or just say it. Because I can't read it. And on mute first. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll mute myself. Kellen, you're still muted. Okay, sorry, I muted myself so I wouldn't make a noise. Uh, my Facebook uh, private message is facebook.com. My Facebook name is Kellen Flukiger3, K E L L A N dot F-L-U-C-K-I-G-E-R dot three. Email is coachkellenflukiger at gmail.com. Coachkellenflukiger at gmail.com. So, yeah, email me if you'd like to get a hold of me, and I'd love to... Uh... Oh, you know, there's also a free gift if you haven't got it already. Uh, it's a piece that I developed for my uh, $40,000 mastermind. It's called the Story Blueprint. If you don't have that already, I'd like to offer it to you. Uh, go to speedtoprofitmarketing.com and uh, I think you have to opt in. Speedtoprofitmarketing.com forward slash story two. 
That's forward slash S T O R Y numeral two. Speed to profit, not a two, but a T O. Speed to profit marketing dot com forward slash story S T O R Y numeral two. There's a template there. Uh, about a blueprint about how to start using personal story. It'll be really cool because it'll also prepare you for the hangouts that are coming in the next few weeks. Thank you for coming today. Our time is expired. I'm going to end our wonderful session and thank all of you for being here today. Look forward to interacting with you on the next hangout or in the Webiverse. Oh, I'm sorry. Anaman, did you have another comment? No, just to say thank you. Great show. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you for coming. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.